Okay, thank you all for joining us. Thank you, uh, our media partners, for being here. Uh, the Stat Commander Lieutenant Tony Macklay has called this press conference to discuss the details uh, of a recent narcotics investigation and the results of that investigation. Uh, we have some of our local and federal law enforcement partners here that were a part of this, and we're going to have a few of them come up. First, I'm going to have Chief Mark McMurray come up and make a statement. Uh, if you would, please hold your questions for him after the press conference. After that, we're going to have special agent in charge, uh, Johnny, sure. Johnny Sharp here, to make a statement. And also with him, please hold your questions until after the press conference. And then Tony uh, will answer questions after Mr. Sharp. All right, Chief. Thank you, Lieutenant Johnson. I'll, I want to take this opportunity to uh, express my thanks to a special team of covert officers. They're the members of the North Alabama Multi-Agency, I'm sorry, the <clears throat> the North Alabama Madison Morgan County Drug Task Force. It's a strategic drug task force or what we call the stack team here in North Alabama. <clears throat> this stack team is made up of investigators from Decatur, from Madison. Uh, it's made up of investigators from Morgan County Sheriff's Department, the city of Huntsville, the city of Madison Police Department. Uh, these MOUs that we have together with these agencies <clears throat> include MOUs from ALEA, from the FBI, from ATF, DEA, several of these investigators are even deputized through the FBI to carry on special investigations. This is truly a team effort between Madison County Sheriff's Department, the Morgan County Sheriff's Department, all these local police departments that are joining together with the federal agencies to combat this crime which we call illegal drug trafficking. It's so much more than just the opioid crisis. It's a whole stream and network of illegal drugs that are coming into this area. These covert in investigators get no public recognition for what they do, and they can't because of the nature of their job. They work very long hours to capture these offenders. These offenders operate networks that are organized and funded all through illegal drug trafficking. What you see here today is a sample of just one of these investigations where these team members have dismantled an entire drug organization. As you can see, there are large amounts of money, there's a serious cache of drugs, and uh, a whole lot of felons that need to go to jail, and many of them are going to jail as a result of this operation. This team could not be successful without this handshake and this partnership, these MOUs, that bind us together for a common purpose starting right from the ONDCP, from the president, from the money that streams down to our federal law enforcement partners that I mentioned. We couldn't do it without everyone working together. And then it wouldn't be successful if we didn't have the prosecution of J-Town and the Northern uh, Alabama Federal Prosecution Office on the back end putting these sentences together to keep them out of our area as well. So it truly is a team effort. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you FBI Johnny Sharp, who is the uh, agent in charge for the entire North Alabama area, and let him say a couple words as well. Thanks, Chief. Good, after, good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the men and women of the FBI's Pitts, uh, Birmingham Division, I want to welcome everyone here today as we announce our enforcement activity from last week. So last week was the culmination of 18 months of hard work and investigative activity uh, by the stack and uh, the FBI Safe Streets Task Force. So the FBI Safe Streets Task Force is an initiative that was started back in 1992. There are well over 800 FBI-led Safe Streets Task Forces throughout the United States um, that are manned by over 900 FBI special agents and then nearly 2,000 task force officers from our state and local partners throughout the United States. And what the Safe Streets Task Force uh, does typically is they partner with our local agencies and collaborative efforts and we go after the most egregious offenders in our community and last week's enforcement activity certainly represented uh, what we view here up on a podium as one of the largest distribution networks of narcotics into northern alabama specifically the huntsville area so the fbi provides funding mechanisms uh, for our state and local partners to give them more resources that uh, since everyone in this day and age is strapped for resources as we try to combat the narcotic threat throughout Northern Alabama. And by being a part of the federal task force, we provide additional resources to them to help fund their narcotics detectives as we counter the opioid epidemic in our communities. 
and we also deputized them so we could try to get the biggest bang for our buck uh, for, from a prosecutive standpoint. So if it makes sense for us to take a case federally, we deputize them under Title 21 authority uh, under the federal government so they could prosecute federal narcotics uh, cases. If it makes more sense to take it at the state level, we work very closely with our DA's offices at the local level to try to get them prosecuted there. So very proud of the enforcement activity that took place last week uh, between the Safe Streets Task Force and Stack. I want to specifically thank our partners, the police departments of Huntsville, Decatur, and Madison, and the sheriff's offices of Morgan County and Madison County, because without their pa partnership, last week's enforcement activity would not have been possible. So to give you a little bit more details on last week's enforcement activity, I'd like to introduce uh, Lieutenant Tony McElyea. First of all, I want to thank uh, each and every one of you for being here for highlighting this case. Like Chief McMurray said, this is just one case that, uh, that we make uh, you know, this week or last week. This is one of many cases that we make on a weekly basis and uh, we, we thank you for being here to highlight a job well done by all of these agencies. Uh, this was a, an 18 month investigation by members of the STAC team as, long, as well as the FBI Safe Streaks Task Force here in Madison County. Before I get started, there's a few people that I would like to thank uh, that make investigations like this policy possible. First of all, I'd like to thank Gulf Coast HIDA Director Tim Valenti as well as State HIDA Director Nick Forte. Their funding and cooperation and partnership uh, with the STAC team make cases like this uh, possible. Their funding comes through the President's Office or ONDCP. I'd also like to thank Chief Mark McMurray, Chief Jernigan, Chief Allen, Sheriff Turner, and Sheriff Puckett for their participation uh, in the STAC team and their cooperative effort in our, ma in our uh, mission to dismantle drug trafficking organizations within the Madison in Morgan County areas. I'd also like to thank FBI Special Agent in Charge Johnny Sharp as well as his FBI partners for their partnership with STAC and the FBI Safe Streets Task Force. Now I want to highlight the details of the case that, that uh, we're here for to discuss. This investigation was an 18-month investigation that led to obtaining probable cause for seven search warrants in the Huntsville, New Market, and Tony, Alabama areas. The search warrants resulted in the seizure of approximately 5.4 pounds of powder cocaine, or two and a half kilos, 11 firearms, also $495,614 in U.S. currency. The street value of all the drugs located is valued at over $195,000. One, one arrest was made the night of October 30th when we conducted this uh, investigation. Ashley Jean Rice was arrested for trafficking in cocaine and certain persons forbidden to possess a firearm. Three warrants will be obtained, be obtained or warrants will be obtained for three individuals. The first one will be Alston Lamont Rice or AKA Little Al for conspiracy to traffic cocaine, certain persons forbidden to possess a firearm, as well as receiving stolen property second degree. Second individual is Nicole Kawhi Douglas a warrant is, has been obtained for her arrest for possession of marijuana first. Jamon Danielle Douglas has a warrant for his arrest for possession with intent to distribute cocaine. Lastly, I would like to thank all the members of the Madison Morgan County Stack team, the men that you see behind me that are participating, their agencies participating in Stack, and the FBI Safe Streets Task Force for their selfless acts of courage, as, as well as their countless hours away from their families to conduct investigations like this. These cases definitely do not come without a combined effort from everyone uh, in these cases. Their diligence and relentlessness in identifying and locating drug trafficking organizations within this area are second to none. All of these individuals and all these men should be commended for their time and effort it takes to be able to present this case and this evidence in front of you and eventually in court. Now I'll take a few questions that you may have. Are these state charges or are they going to base federal charges too? All the charges that I just mentioned to you at this point are state charges. So is there a possibility that the FBI is involved? Yeah, we'll, we'll discuss that at a later date, but as of right now, they're all state charges. We'll discuss whether they're going to go federal, but as of right now, they're all state. Can you talk about, I mean, 5.4 pounds of cocaine and 1.5 mm -hmm. ounces of marijuana, maybe put that into terms where it's not just the 5.4 pounds, but it's the 
people sitting at home might understand more how much that is? Well, 5.4 pounds of marijuana or two and a half kilos is, is, has a street value of 195,000. We found this drugs or we found this amount of drugs and we also located just under $500,000 in currency. I don't know about y'all, but I don't have that kind of money laying around my house, which showed you the level of profit margin on this amount of drugs. So it was, uh, like Agent Sharp said, probably one of the largest uh, drug trafficking organizations in this area. And it's very significant because once you take somebody at that level, obviously that filters down and, and that reduces the amount of, of narcotics filter down through the streets in smaller amounts. Like how many people could maybe it be sold to? Like are we talking about like hundreds of people that – like how much of that? Right. That so yeah. So 5.4. I mean, you know, uh, you know, 100 people could easily be. Uh, you know, this could be funneled down through hundreds of people eventually when you include the, the sellers all the way down to the user. Uh, there's really no total amount that we could uh, actually put on that, but it could be up to 100 people. Lieutenant, I, th I think you might have switched the weights of the cocaine and marijuana. Put in the mm -hmm. context the. Uh, the amount of weight for the cocaine, because I think you said 5.4 for the marijuana. I just want to. I'm sorry. Yeah, 5.4 pounds of cocaine, one one and a half ounce of marijuana. And put that in context. Well, what does that mean on the in our communities? I guess. Right. So mm -hmm. the amount of cocaine, like I said before, the amount of cocaine, that large amount of cocaine, definitely impacts uh, the amount of cocaine that hit the streets. The amount of cocaine that your routine patrol officers on your routine traffic stop see. Uh, once you take somebody at that level, it definitely fu funnels down and reduces the amount that are that are pushed through the streets every day. Do you have any idea where they're sourcing this cocaine from? I'm sorry? Do you have any idea where they're sourcing this campaign from? I mean, cocaine from, sorry? We don't have that information at this time, uh, to my knowledge, but uh, uh, yeah, we don't have the information where this, com where this uh, source of cocaine was. It says Rice Family Drug Operation, so I guess can you talk about their relations to each other? Yeah, so uh, little Al or Alison Lamont Rice is, and, uh, and Ashley Jean Rice, her brothers, uh, they were involved in this drug trafficking organization in partnership and together. Um, so all of this. Um, and then the other two? The Douglas two? Kawhi, Doug, uh, Nicole Douglas, and Jamon Danielle Douglas, uh, I believe, are husband and wife. Are they all four family? Like, how do they all four know each other besides the two brothers and the husband and wife? Okay, well, let me say this. The relationship between the Douglases, uh, I'm not 100% sure on that, so don't quote me on that, but I, uh, I do know they are related, um, and um, they will be uh, have warrants for their arrest. Would this be considered like a high-level operation that was distributing to other distributors, or was this like direct to, I guess, users? Yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely a high-level operation. This is an 18-month investigation. Anytime we spend that amount of resources and that time on investigation, it's definitely going to be to the higher level. Uh, we want to get everything that we need for prosecution. This is, it's all well and good to get somebody locked up and put behind bars. You spend that amount of time and utilize the resources from all these gentlemen behind me uh, because the end goal is prosecution. It's not just an arrest and put behind bars. We want to make sure we have all of our uh, evidence that we need to present in court. Are the ones not arrested? Are they on the run? They just haven't been taken into custody at this time. So just the one who's been arrested? Just the one who's been arrested to, to today's date. <coughs> what do you expect to find it with these three warrants at these houses? I'm sorry? What do you expect to find at these three addresses? Uh, you know, w at this time they're just arrest warrants. Okay. So once we locate them, if we see find probable cause to obtain more search warrants, we may do that, but at this time they're just arrest warrants. The amount of cash. In the years I've been doing this, I've never heard about a take-in like that. I mean, what does that mean as far as, like, when you make an arrest like this, the effects, and what does it say something about the, this traffic, uh, trafficking operation? Right. Well, when you seize this amount of money, uh, when, you, when you take in from drug trafficking organizations this amount of cash, obviously that is a huge cut to the drug trafficking organization, the drug traffic here locally, right? So the funding operation, the funding of this, uh, this, these drugs into the community, once you take that much drug or th that much cash, as well as the drugs from someone, um, that you know hurts the funding. This isn't you guys' first big bust this year, so can you maybe talk to other people who are out there doing stuff um, to this degree? I mean, are you guys you guys aren't done yet? Maybe talk about that. Yeah, and this will be the last question, but. <clears throat> Once you fill a void, once there's a void at this level of drug trafficking organization, somebody tries to fill that void. 
that's our job as drug investigators and my guys to job to identify that individual and uh, include or, or begin an investigation on that individual so we turn out with the same result that we have here today. That would be the last question uh, that we have here today. This concludes the press conference, but uh, we'll be, all be available for private interviews here in just a few moments.